Welcome to Story Comic Presents, where we interview amazing storytellers and artists. This is episode 249. I'm your host, Barney Smith of StoryComic.com, and we're honored to have with us the inspiring and acclaimed author of Cracked, My Life After a Skull Fracture, Jim Barry. How are you doing? Oh, thank you, Jim. Pretty good. Pretty good. We're here to talk about your the book that you just recently published called Cracked. Mm-hmm. This is about your your journey that you experienced a, a, a brain injury back in 2012, correct? Correct. Talk to us a little bit about the book. It's been getting great reviews. You've had a lot of good reviews about it and how it's there's this level of just like inspiration and also just like ingenuity and fortitude seems to be the larger aspects of how the 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 book goes along and it's it's a really good memoir we've seen a lot of people that also that have experienced traumatic brain injuries seem to really appreciate your story and are also inspired a bit by it as well but do you want to first kind of talk about we can talk about the book and the story behind it but at what point during the process you did you decide that you actually wanted to write a book about your experience I, I started like in 2015 mm. and taking some notes with the thought of eventually writing something. And then I, well, I wrote the first version uh, a couple years later and then I revised it and edited to it since then. And and so how did you decide once you actually kind of put the draft together, how did you find Rootstock Publishing? A friend played that then. I started working with a writing coach. And so I had a writing coach in Woodstock, Vermont. Okay. Um and she um actually recommended Rootstock. She heard wow. some good things about it. No, I thought, no, I'll, I'll give them a shot. Right. And and so how did that process work? So you actually reached out to them. Did they do like any like editing work for you? And did, did they help um, design the cover and all that stuff as well? Some, yeah. I worked with the writing coach for like about a year. And then... um. And she had some really, really good things at him. And then I, once I submitted to Rusan, then they had a few more things at him. And they found like the cover photo on top. And so talk to us a bit about uh, now about the book. Now it's, it's a memoir. It kind of talks about ex- your experience of your traumatic brain injury, but yeah. um, so how so how is the book split up? It's my understanding that it's kind of split up into two parts. Like the first part is about your um, uh, the actual injury and the rehab, and then the yeah. other part is about your yeah life after. Yeah, the book I know parent loves my life. A lot was going on in like the first eighteen months, and so that's the first part. Um, and that's mostly chronological. And then the second part, since that time, things had just evolved much more slowly. And so, and they all kind of match together in time. I broke things up by topic in the second part once we get past that first 18 months. And, and so how did that so how did that process go for you? Like how, what, what were some of the, th- so, you know, after the initial injury and then th- the rehabilitation process, um, how, how long did it take? Because, you know, getting a traumatic brain injury, the quicker you go into rehabilitation, the more successful one would get, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Putting it all down on paper, the first time with Skype Emotional mm. and Unisex. Um, it's kind of therapeutic though right. in that um, you have to rewind and rewind and rewind 
in by the time you're done, it doesn't bother you so much. Um, because you're kind of used to the town. Mm, right. Yeah. And and so because before you were an engineer before and you know, you used to you wrote a lot, but mostly like technical manuals and engineering pieces, correct? Um, yeah. Yeah. I wrote a lot of reports in proposals and stuff like that. And so I was really familiar with the writing process from mm. that standpoint. Less so from like a narrative point of view. Right. Okay. And and so how how was it different the uh, when you when you're actually writing as a memoir? What kind of skills did you have in your in your previous career of, of writing technical manuals and stuff? Did um, any of those skill sets help you in writing a memoir? Probably the the main thing that helped me, well, I wore a lot of hats. Mm. And one of the hats I wore when I was working, I was in charge of marketing for the company. And so okay. I wrote a lot of marketing pieces. Right. And so that was probably the most similar to what I, I did here. And so because of that, as you mentioned, writing a memoir, how how hard was it to say, all right, I want to write something that I want to say, or do you say, I, I want to write something that people might want to read? Are those two things different, or are those two things the same for you? I think they're pretty similar for me. There were a few cases where my writing coach had some good suggestions. Okay. I had to make it more engaging. With that said, did you have to, when he made you so gave you some ideas, your writing coach gave you some ideas, did they tell you to you know, like make it more dramatic or make it a bit more readable? No. Or did you feel like you had to keep everything real in that I, sense? The, the biggest thing I'll suggest him was I started the first couple of chapters right. with a quote, which kind of helped set the stage for the chapter. And they said, she said, why don't you do that everywhere? Mm, right. And so I did that, and that really helped. So as you put the book, as you put the book together, did this kind of give you some? As you said, it was a really good. It was really good therapy at the beginning. Um, writing it. Now, how much of this is also seems to be a bit of advocacy? Is it you also see this as more of like also some advocacy pieces to really educate people on 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 what a traumatic brain injury um, is as well? Yeah, somewhat. The reason I wrote it was mostly because when something like that that has happened to you, mm. um, you all by yourself. And you don't really know other people that have gone through something similar. And now it's very useful to me about the experience. So with that, there's also what you see is also, as we mentioned, the advocacy piece. But is there also like an educational piece? Because I know in the second half of the book, you kind of talk about some benefits of some like mobility aids and some other like uh, some other um, yeah. equipment pieces. Did you see that um, as... Did you see that as being an important part of kind of pushing the story along? Of course, I had no experience with any of this mm. until um, I got hurt. And so I tried to lay out a few things that I have learned mm. going through this process. I know everybody's different. Well, there are some common things that everyone will have to go through. And, and and what are some of those and what are some of those points that you that you noticed that you learned? Things like, well, a friend asked me recently about wheelchair questions. Because I didn't really know anything about them when I started out. And one of the problems I had initially was I tend to slide out all the time. And I, 
I depended on the seatbelt to keep me in the, the wheelchair. Mm. I bought another wheelchair for using a gourd. And it had a different kind of cushion. It worked a lot better. And like, oh. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I learned that the, the cover on the cushion makes a big difference. Right. I'm sure the shape of the cushion makes a big difference to some, to some people. For me, it was a slippery one. And, and so are and there are some of those stories that people will be able to look at and read in, inside your book as well? Yeah, yeah. There, there, there's some discussion on that in the book. You talk about um, how I got cycling again and and that's the thing and stuff. And so those are all things that I I hope I would just call someone. So as you said, like who is who would you say for the that this memoir, who would be the really good target audience? Would it be people that want to learn more about uh brain injury survivors or would it be somebody that um maybe general audience? So who would you see that would be the uh the, the target audience for your memoir? Well, all of us have challenges in life. They're all a little different, but the important part is to keep struggling forward. Mm. And so that's, that's a message that everyone can take. So talk to us a little bit about just like your, your writing process. So as you said, you wrote this three years after your brain injury. You wrote this. Then you kind of rewrote it again a couple of years after that. Uh, did you see – did the first draft – did the second draft change dr dramatically from the first draft? Not really. There were a few changes, but mostly they're pretty minor. Most of what I, I wrote, at least about the first 18 months, didn't change too much. Some of the other stuff didn't evolve more over time. And did you see also did did your some of your experiences? Because as we said, it was two years after. Did you add anything else into the, oh, the second yeah. half of the book? Yeah. For example, we had the pandemic. Right. That was a big deal. Um. Yeah. Um. I don't. Breathe too well. So if I caught COVID, it wouldn't be good. Right. Um, right. So, um, but beyond that, um, there was there were some trips. My wife and I talked to like visit people and stuff like that. And that informed um, some of the later stuff in the book. Mm. Right. And and so how did so to talk to us also about like your writing your writing process in the sense of when you actually sat down and decided to work on the second draft, was it something along the lines where you would just work diligently all day or did you work on like a few pages a day or how did um, how does your writing process work? Yeah. Well, I'm a morning person. Okay. Now, typically, I work for a couple of hours after breakfast. Well, I can't type anymore. I just use one finger now. Wow. Okay. And so it goes a little slow, but not too bad. Most of the time, you spend thinking, not, not typing. It might take me a month or two. To get through uh, a draft, and and so once that draft goes, you have did you have people that were proofread it, like your wife or anybody proofread it before you sent it out to some editors well, as well? Um, my wife read a draft mostly back in the old days. I used to proof a lot of things, right? That's how. 
And um, now, they're not very good. Between the cell ticker, and the grammar ticker, and the software, and then, of course, my coach, and then Rutak. There weren't too many, but there were some that wasn't the best. Because of the success of your book so far and getting a lot of good, a lot of good reviews on it, have you, um, have you looked at trying to make an updated version or maybe a, a, a second book to it as well? No, not in terms of a, like a memoir. I do a lot of fiction writing. Okay. But so far, that's not for me All because right. I like that. Maybe someday go somewhere. Maybe it doesn't. Right. Well, that's good. So that that's interesting. So, what kind of what kind of fiction are do you? What kind of fiction books do you like um, to read or write? Kind of mystery. It's it's kind of contemporary. Um, well, at least what I think of as contemporary. Okay. Um, the world as I knew it when I got hurt, because things have changed since then. We'll see. Yeah, that's exciting. So this is good, Jim. So, uh, so for those that are interested in, in learning more about your book, where's the best place? Could, where's the best place they could go? Well, if you go, well, you can go directly to Rootstock, and they have a nice web page. Uh, it's also available everywhere else. Let's see. And at my website, jjberry.net, there's a um, link directly to Rootstock and to Amazon. Yep, and you can order it. And like I say, you can, uh, and we've, we've gotten a lot of great advanced praise on it. It just came out um, January 31st, 2023, correct? Correct. Right. Yeah. Yep. You got. You should be able to come back on when you get your uh, your mystery book written, and come back on and talk about that too. Oh yeah, I hope so. So yeah, so for those that are interested in in in, in the book, it's a really good book for those that really want to learn more about um, you know, uh, surviving a traumatic brain injury and learning about the rehabilitation, and also just really reading a good uh, an inspirational story. Definitely okay. check out cracked my life after skull fracture by jim barry and as he said it's available through rootstockpublishing.com but it's also please check out his story as well and everything at jamesjberry.net and all that information will be on in the show notes so well thank you very much jim it was a it was such a great pleasure to sit down and talk to you well, thank you